Welcome back everyone. This is Mindy Egan here today for Lawn Fawn. And in today's video, I'm going to be using the new Lawn Fawn stencils and I'll be creating a magic iris card with that background. To start off my card, I'm going to be doing some Copic, Copic coloring of images that I stamped out here. I am using the stamp set A Bug Deal and also the stamp set Really High Five. So most of the images are coming from A Bug Deal. Uh, the balloon and the fox I had added from A Really High Five. And I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do for my card. So I just had stamped out, you know, a few of those images just in case and I'll color them up. All of the colors are listed on the right hand side of the screen here. So if you wanted to use that for reference, you certainly could. I kept it pretty simple. The bugs are super simple to color up because they are so small. And I do actually bring in, I think, a couple other ones that I had colored off screen. I use use them in my cards as well. What I really had fun coloring was the balloon. I think it's always really fun to put that little shine spot in a balloon. And I'll show you here shortly how I did that. I'll start by coloring the balloon with my lightest color, which is going to be the R22. And then once I have that uh, filled in, I'm going to bring in my darkest color, which is the R39. You kind of have to decide where you want your shadow area to be. So the R39 just went on that one side, and then I'm bringing in that R27, and I'm leaving just a sliver of a spot on that balloon. That R22 is going to be kind of my highlight area on there. So once all that coloring is done, I line up those coordinating dies, die cut out my images, and set them off on the side to work on my background. This is the new grassy stencil. I am so super excited that Lawn Fawn came out with stencils. I absolutely love using stencils on my cards. So to create my one layer background scene, I'm starting off with a piece of white cardstock. This is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I added a couple pieces of post-it tape behind it. I want to hold my stencil in place. This is was the easiest for me. You could also spray your stencil with pixie spray, but I found this was just the quickest way to do it. So I'm starting off with my grass. I'm going to come in and just quickly lay down a color. So this is Cracked Pistachio Distress Oxide Ink. It doesn't have to be completely filled in the background. It just needs to be kind of that base layer for us to work on. Then I'm going to bring in the Lucky Clover. And I'm going to blend that on using a blending brush. I'll bring it down just a smidge. I want it to have kind of two layers of grass, so I don't want to go down too far with the Lucky Clover. Now to really add the dimension to this grass, I'm going to bring in pine needles and add that just to the tippy top blades of grass there. You can come back in and always blend out a little bit with that Lucky Clover. So then I'll just carefully peel that stump stencil up and I'm going to shift it down a little bit. So now we're creating our second layer of grass. Once again, coming in with that lucky clover. And I want to make sure to kind of leave that highlight area towards the bottom. And then a little bit with the pine needles. So this is going to look really cool. It almost looks like you really did die cut pieces when really it's just a stencil. Now, once I have my grass on there, I'm just going to carefully remove that post-it tape. I'm going to save that because I'm going to be using it again here shortly. Now, in between, I do like to clean my work surface and my stencil. And the super cool thing about these stencils is you line up that other portion of the stencil, and that is going to mask off your grass so we can work on the sky. Genius. I love it when stencils do this. It's so much easier to do your ink blending. So once again, I'm laying down just a really quick light color. This is Tumbled Glass Distress Oxide Ink. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Just need to kind of have that base layer on there. And then still leaving that mask down there for the grass, I'm going to bring in the Cloudy Stencil. And this one you could hold down with some post-it tape or spray with Pixie Spray if you want. I'm just going to hold that in place with my fingers. And then I'm going to ink blend Salty Ocean. So then I will uh, flip, or I'm sorry, I'll kind of just turn my stencil to use another side of this. 
Inkblend on that salty ocean. Now I am going up and I'm leaving just a little bit of highlight there in between the clouds. And then turn the stencil again, gives me a, another layer of the clouds. And I didn't want to add too many there, so three for me is good. And then just adding a little bit of that salty ocean right above the blades of grass, bringing that up towards my last set of clouds. So now we have our one layer background. This is great. It was really quick and easy to put together. One more quick thing that I decided to want I wanted to do was add just a little bit of interest to my background. So I am placing that grass stencil back on to mask my clouds. I squished down some of that pine needles, distress oxide ink, spritzed some water, and I'm just going to flick this on my grass. You see this a lot of time with sand, but I think it looks really cool on the grass and on the sky too. It just kind of breaks it up, doesn't make it so uh, flat looking. And then once those splatters were dry, I masked that off with the stencil again, squished down the salty ocean, spritzed with water and flicked onto my background for the sky too. Once that panel was completely dry, I'm going to take this Magic Iris add-on and die cut my background using this uh, add-on piece. So when I die cut that, I always make sure to save those center pieces because we're going to be using that later on. Then I can work on my Magic Iris. So I have those three circles die cut out using the Magic Iris die. One of them I will die cut out that spiral shape from. So it's going to leave those inserts there. And then taking my hot dog shape and just uh, putting that tab into the slots all the way to the edge, making sure that those curves all line up so it fits around. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to take some glue dots and add those right to the X that is kind of embossed into those hot dog shape pieces. Now my glue dots, I still don't have the right size glue dots. Mine are still a little bit bigger. So I'm kind of squishing them together so they're not taking up so much room. It seems to work for me for now, but I do have some of those smaller glue dots on the way. So when you see me kind of scraping that with my fingernail, that's because I'm trying to make them not so big, but it still works out. It, everything still worked. So then I'm just going to hold these pieces in place, making sure that they all uh, line up correctly, and then taking a second circle and adding that directly on top. And then I can flip this over, and I'm going to take some tape runner, and I'm going to add a straight line down from those marks that the spiral die had left. So I'm just adding that tape runner there and I can take my braces. Now these can be in any color. It's gonna be hidden behind our panel. I just did uh, this mermaid cardstock because I had a piece of scrap sitting there. So I die cut my braces out of that. Then I can flip this back over. So this is the front. I'm gonna add some glue. This is my tab to turn my magic iris or to open and close it. Once I attached that tab, I can go ahead and add some tape runner to the braces and taking that third circle, add it directly on top and then just gently folding in those braces. I want to make sure that they're not meeting all the way in. I don't think they will anyway, but you don't want them to go all the way into the inside. Just gently fold over and that'll attach it down. And then I like to kind of just work it a little bit, make sure everything is running smoothly. Off screen, I did go ahead and die cut that tab that goes with this add-on piece. And I'm going to just add some tape runner to that and add that right on there. I need to kind of set up my card how it's going to be on my card front because that is how I'm going to make the front or that closed position make it look like it's all part of the scene. So once I did that, I took some post-it tape, kind of rolled it up and put it behind my magic iris so it's sticking to the table. And then I laid that cover on top. This is going to give me an idea where my grass is. And I lined up my stencil onto there. Now, it doesn't matter if I'm getting ink on the rest of the magic iris. I mainly just wanted it on the closed pieces of the magic iris. So it's going to look like all one scene. See, my grass looks like it just goes all the way through. 
So once I did that, which I blended, I just used the pine needles. I didn't need to go quite in depth with it because you don't see a lot of it. So using that grass, at, grass stencil as a mask, I'm going to kind of hold that in place with the post-it tape because then I'm going to bring in the cloudy stencil and add some clouds to the background. Again, there's not like a ton of room, but I did want to add that on here. So I'm just figuring out about which side I need for the stencil. You can see it moving that cover piece out of the way and then bringing in some of the salty ocean, lightly blending that on. I like to start light because I can always add more ink. It's harder to take away or it would look a little more obvious if I had come in too strong with that ink blending. And then going down towards the mask, blending up a little bit. And that looks perfect. Really happy with how that turned out because it matches the front of my card so well, kind of disguising it. And then just quickly adding the splatters to coincide with the front of the card. So I did that with the salty ocean and the pine needles. You didn't have to do that or you don't have to do it. I just really wanted my scene to match as much as possible to the front of my cover. And then just give that a little bit of time to dry. So then I can take my tape runner and I can add the tape runner uh, to the entire front of this magic iris. Since I kind of already lined it up, this is all going to match really well. Uh, my edges are going to all line up. So making sure that your tab there on the side lines up perfectly with the edge and my inside of the closed iris matches up, lines up perfectly with the rest of my background. Now is a matter of decorating. So some of the elements, one other thing that I had brought in that was kind of an afterthought was I did the bunting borders. So I had this really cute banner that I made kind of decorating the forest for the birthday. Uh, so I did the bunting banners and then I used the really rainbow paper pack to die cut out the individual banners and added them under my tree branches. I just loved that idea. I knew for sure in this card design that I wanted to have that there and then bringing in a couple other of the leaves. Now, normally I have my card completely planned out before I do a video. I just did not settle on an idea when I had planned this, so I didn't have a place for my sentiment. I didn't think that out. So here I am attempting to add a sentiment on the bottom uh, by heat embossing. So all through this process, I'm crossing my fingers, my toes, and hoping that this all works out after all the work I put into it. So I'm using a sentiment that's off of a bug deal stamp set. And I prepped that with an anti-static powder tool, stamped that in the clear embossing ink, and then sprinkling on the Lawn Fawn white embossing powder. And I was so happy when I saw that this stamped so well and it worked out. Now, once I have uh, that sentiment on there, I need to add that inner piece to my uh, card base. So I lined up my cover uh, cardstock piece and just penciled in where that circle was going to be because we're covering it up anyway. And this is the piece that we actually had die cut out earlier. So it's always nice to save those. Then I can add my cover piece back on. So I added the foam squares. Now I did not notice until I was editing the video, I forgot to put tape runner on those braces. So you'll see here, even though I forgot to add that tape runner, everything held together really well. Those foam squares, everything is staying in place and my magic iris works perfectly. So then I'll go ahead, just add more tape runner to the back of that white cardstock. So I have a nice white border around there and adding it to a cilantro cardstock base. Then I can add a few more little items. I have a butterfly here with my birthday balloon and I believe the little cricket I'm gonna add in there, just tucking them in. When you tuck them in, you wanna make sure you're getting all the way down so it's not getting caught on your magic iris piece. So I lift it up a little bit to make sure I'm not gonna get caught on any of those pieces and my interactive portion will run smoothly. Now that finishes up my birthday card for today. I hope you were able to pick up the magic iris or the stencils. Both are so great and so fun to use. I know that I'll be using those stencils a lot more. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you again soon.